Hi, today let's have a look at a simple voltage booster. With this, with an input of about 12 volts, you can obtain an output of up to 120 volts or even 170 volts if so desired. The circuit is built around the TL494 PWM IC and all the pinouts of the IC and the entire connections are as shown. Before we get to the actual king of the circuit, let's have a look at a simple DC to DC boost converter and how it works. So it consists basically of four parts, an inductor, a diode, a capacitor, and a switch, which in this case is a MOSFET, but you can use an IGBT or even a bipolar transistor. There's also of course the power source and the output load. The working behind this is fairly simple. Assuming in the first stage, you have a high pass to the gate of the MOSFET Q1, it will cause the MOSFET to turn on and conduct. Current will begin flowing from the positive of the battery through the inductor L1, through Q1 and to the negative as shown. And because when the MOSFET is on, the voltage drop across it is very small, and so the wall 12 volts is applied across the inductor L1, with positive at this point and negative at this point. The one remains off because it's reverse biased. After some time, a low pass will be sent to the gate of the MOSFET from the control circuit and it will turn off, cutting off the current flow to the negative terminal via Q1. Because an inductor will tend to maintain the current flow through its TD, this will force the voltage polarity across it to reverse in a manner that you have negative here and positive here. And now the voltage across the inductor and that from the power source, they are in series. This will force D1 to conduct because it's now forward biased and current will flow through D1 to the output load and also to change C1. On the third stage, another high pass is fed to the gate of Q1 and it will force the MOSFET to conduct. Now again, there's a ground reference here and the inductor will begin storing energy in the form of a magnetic field. D1 is now reverse biased and it will turn off, but since C1 had changed during the second cycle, it will continue providing power to the road in this stage, and then the process repeats over and over. The switching frequency is usually about 20 to 100 kilohertz, but 25 to 50 kilohertz is more common. Now back to the circuit. The control is the TL494. It comes in a 16-pin package. It has two internal air amplifiers and two output transistors. The frequency of oscillation is determined by CT and RT, which is C2 and R4. They are 1 and 27 kilo ohms respectively, and this will set the oscillator frequency to 37 kilohertz, which will also be the output frequency in this case, because the output control pin that is connected to ground, and so the output transistors will be working as a single-ended driver or a parallel driver. The second air amplifier is disabled by pulling up its inverting input pin 2 to 5 volts which is generated by the reference pin 14 and pulling down the non-inverting input to ground. The first air amplifier is used as a feedback to regulate the output voltage. So pin 2 which is the inverting is fanned 5 volts from FIREF pin 14 and pin 1 is fanned from the feedback voltage from this potential divider circuit made up of R7, RV1 and R8 as shown. On the first stage, the output transistors both conduct, and when they do so, they will allow current to flow from the VCC through the resistor R5, through C1 and C2, and to ground via E1 and E2. Now because you have ground reference here, the BD139 Q1 will be off, and so there will be a VCC at the gate of the MOSFET Q2, forcing it to conduct. Now current will flow from the power supply through the inductor R1, through the MOSFET and to the ground as shown, and energy will begin building up in the inductor in the form of a magnetic field. After some time, the transistors will turn off, and now the transistor Q1 will conduct because there will be VCC reference at its base, and when this happens, it will basically connect the gate of the MOSFET Q2 to ground, forcing it to turn off very fast. Now, the voltage across the inductor one will reverse, and it will be in series with the power source, and this will form bias the diode D1 and current to flow through D1 to change the capacitor C6, C7 and to power the output load. D1 is a high frequency short key diode. You can use the MPR series diodes. Just select one written for 310 amperes and 200 volts. Here's a list for possible diodes which you can use. 
the capacitor C6 is 100 microfarads and 250 volts. C4 is 1000 microfarads and at least 35 volts, as well as C1. C5 is a ceramic disc capacitor to filter high frequency noise from the power supply. Now as the output rises, the voltage at this point will increase to a point where it's slightly above 5 volts and this will trigger the faster amplifier and it will have a positive output and this will cause the output duty cycle to reduce and so cause the output voltage to stop rising and by adjusting this potentiometer you can adjust the output voltage up to the desired value. Capacitor C8 filters the feedback voltage to the air amplifier to prevent any accidental triggering. It's just a raw value 10 nanofarads ceramic disc capacitor. The power rating for the boost converter is about 60 to 100 watts with the transistor IRFP260 which is written for 49 amperes and 200 volts you can obtain 100 watts without a problem. You can include some other modifications if you want to the circuit. For example, the secondary amplifier can be used as a current sensing for the, either the output or even the current flowing through the MOSFET Q2 to prevent overcurrent. But in this case, the circuit will work just fine as shown because the IC has a maximum duty cycle of 97%, so there will be no point whereby the MOSFET Q1 will be completely on. I hope you have enjoyed this video, if so make sure to give it a like, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel, have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video.